Hey, what's going on guys? I'm getting ready to create a PHP crash course on YouTube. But before I do that, I just wanted to put a video out there and talk a little bit about the language and look at some of the pros and cons to help you decide if you should actually spend the time to learn it or not. Uh, so I do have a video called Web Development in 2017, A Practical Guide. And it's my most commented on video. It has the most likes on my channel, but it also has the most dislikes. And that's because many web developers are strongly opinionated when it comes to this stuff. Um, so some web developers really despise PHP, and that's fine. Everyone's different. Everyone is entitled to their opinion. I happen to really like PHP for, for small and medium-sized applications and websites, as long as the code is written correctly. Uh, now with that said, what I want to do in this video is not try and sway those people into liking or using PHP, but just to take a look at the facts of what PHP is and what it isn't, and then you can make that decision on your own. And I'm not here to say PHP is the best server side language out there because I don't think that. Uh, in fact, I think it's stupid and closed minded to say anything is the best or the worst. Everyone's different and everyone has their own abilities and their own opinions, and they adapt to certain syntax in a different way. Uh, that's why I can't stand when someone says this is the best and that's the worst because I said so. That shit pisses me off. Uh, it just makes you look arrogant and ignorant. But anyways, I'm not going to go off into a, a negative rant. So, uh, most likely you're here because you're probably wondering what server-side language you should learn first or second or third. Now, if you were to ask my opinion, I would narrow it down to either PHP, Node.js, or Python. All right, I'm actually very new to Python. I've been working with Django recently, and I do really like it. Um, if you asked me a few months ago, I would have said Rails instead of Python, but Rails has really seemed to level off recently, uh, and I absolutely love Node.js. So uh, Node may be an attractive choice, because chances are you already know some JavaScript, um, so the logical choice would be to go with Node. But I would actually look at it from a different angle and look at it as choosing something that's not JavaScript gives you a little bit of experience with a secondary language. So you can kind of look at that, look at what's similar uh, and what's different between the two, and then you can start to look at other languages and compare those and just start to get a better idea of how programming works in general. So I don't really have a clear recommendation aside from looking at those three, Node, PHP, and Python. Uh, I don't know enough about most of these other languages aside from just the basics. I wouldn't recommend Java or C++ or anything like that for your first language. Not because they're not good, they're extremely powerful, um, but because they're just too difficult and too strict for a beginner. All right. Now what I actually did was just what I said, I learned HTML and CSS and basic JavaScript and then went to PHP. Uh, I worked with that for a long time, I learned a bunch of frameworks, and then I went back to JavaScript and learned Node.js, Express, and a bunch of client-side frameworks like Angular and React, um, then Rails, and now Python. So that's what I did, and I don't regret any of those decisions. Uh, I've done pretty well with those, and I can pick up languages very quickly now. All right, so that th those are pretty much your choices. So let's take a look at some of the advantages of PHP. So I think one of the biggest reasons to learn PHP is because it's absolutely everywhere. Love it or hate it, around 35% or so of the websites on the internet use PHP in one form or another. It may even be higher than that, I'm not really sure. Uh, WordPress is actually a, a big chunk of that, which is the most popular content management system or blog platform by far. Now with that said, PHP is a great language to learn if you're looking for a job. I'm not saying it's the best, but it is up there. Uh, there's a ton of web design and development firms out there that use WordPress or even Joomla or Drupal, and these are, are the most popular content management systems, and web design companies love these because it enables their clients to update their own content instead of bugging them to do it. Now, of course, you could create your own content management system in any language, but you can roll out a WordPress site in a week, especially if you're using pre-made plugins and templates. So PHP is also incredibly easy to learn when you compare it to a language like Java or C++. Uh, this is a big advantage, but it can also be a disadvantage, and I'll tell you why in a little bit. So support is another big advantage. PHP has a huge community, and if you get stuck, there's a really good chance you can find a fix for your exact problem. Uh, most developers know PHP even if they don't use it, or even if they hate it, a lot of them still know it. 
Uh, so support is a big plus. PHP also gives you a ton of freedom, and this is a, another example of something that's both good and bad. Uh, it's not a typed language. You don't have to define your data types or anything like that. Uh, there's a million different ways to create the same functionality. So integration is another good one. Um, you can use PHP with just about any database, MySQL, Postgres, NoSQL databases like MongoDB. Uh, there's an adapter for pretty much <coughs> excuse me, any type of, of database or data store that you want to use. There's also a ton of frameworks available for PHP. And this allows people that understand PHP but aren't masters um, create pretty significant applications. Frameworks do a lot of the hard stuff for us. Uh, Laravel is very popular. You also have Symfony, CodeIgniter. There's a huge list of frameworks for PHP. You can also use multiple paradigms. This ties into the freedom aspect. Um, you can use procedural or functional programming with PHP as well as hardcore object-oriented code using classes. Uh, most people start with procedural because it's much easier uh, and then you can gradually start to learn the object-oriented stuff. All right, and PHP can also be directly embedded into HTML and that's also a huge plus. And then it's also pre-configured on most hosting environments, especially shared hosting. If you go to HostGator or DreamHost or any of those companies, um, they usually have PHP pre-installed on their servers. And there's even one-click installations for things like WordPress um, and even e-commerce platforms like Magento and, and so on. Um, and there's a, there's a lot of good free PHP scripts out there. All right, so those are the reasons why you should learn PHP. Now let's take a look at some disadvantages. So I said earlier that PHP was really easy to learn uh, and it offers you a lot of freedom. That can be a good advantage as far as you being able to learn a language, but it can also be a huge disadvantage. Too much freedom can, can mean a poor language design. Uh, PHP adapts its syntax from many different other languages. Um, you have Perl, C, C++, Java, and so on. Uh, so it can be extremely inconsistent and flaky. It doesn't really have, in some sense, it doesn't really have its own identity. Okay, so that leads us to the next one, which is that it's too easy to write bad code. There's a lot of bad scripts out there written in PHP. Uh, like I said, there's a million ways to write the same functionality and this can make things very difficult and just annoying when you're working with someone else's code. Um, I've had times where I just can't figure out what the hell they were thinking when they wrote it, um, but PHP is so flexible that it, it still works. You know, if you visit the front end of the website or the app, it still works. Uh, it's just a very poor and difficult design. And PHP is also weakly typed. Uh, while that makes things easier, this can also lead to bugs and issues. Okay, so the next one is scalability. PHP isn't uh, completely suitable for really big applications that use big data. Um, you can have problems with scaling. It's fine for small to medium sized applications and websites, but when we start getting into uh, apps with millions of users and thousands of pages, it starts to get a little difficult to manage uh, because it's not highly modular. I think a big part of that is because it was designed to cr basically create dynamic websites, not so much high-tech applications. Uh, if you're building a, a really large application with big data, you're probably better off going with something like the mean stack. All right, now as far as security, every language has its flaws. PHP is completely open source and it's not compiled, and this gives, gives it some vulnerabilities. Um, although a lot of the, the insecure PHP programs are due to bad code, not really the language itself. All right, so these are, are pretty much the, the main disadvantages. I think the biggest, that, that the reason why deve some developers really hate PHP is its poor design, um, and, and the code can really just be an ugly mess um, and, and it very inconsistent. So I think that's the main reason. All right, so the conclusion is up to you to decide. Uh, again, I'm not going to suggest PHP for your first language. I'm not going to do that at all. I will suggest PHP, Node, or Python, um, but I won't go any further than that without knowing what works for you and how you code, because everyone's different. 
Um, and it's just stupid for me to say that this is, is the language you should learn because I don't know you. Um, but the bottom line is all languages have good and bad qualities. Um, web, lang web technologies, um, desktop programming languages, anything has, its, has good and bad. Um, PHP is popular and widely used. That's a, a good enough reason for me to want to learn it or to have wanted to learn it. Um, but I would suggest that you learn other languages as well. Uh, don't, don't just stick with PHP for the rest of your career. All right, and then most of all, most important, write good code, learn good coding practices, um, stay consistent, make things very clean, and PHP will work out just fine for you. All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this and learned a little bit something uh, from it, and hopefully I, I praised it enough for you guys that like PHP, and I bashed it enough for you guys that hate it. All right, so thanks for watching.